Welcome to Berlin and the office of Napalm Records, where I have Powerful, Powerwolf with me. <laughs> uh, first of all, guys, uh, how is Powerwolf doing at the moment? Well, I would say pretty excited. Uh, we've just finished uh, the work on a new album and, uh, well, now busy promoting it. And uh, I would say we can't wait to get back on stages and release the album. Uh, yeah. As said, uh, the new album, uh, The Sacrament of Sin, is coming out in uh, July. So what can you tell me about this album in your own words? Well, I think um, it's the most diverse we did so far. It's uh, an album that has a lot of variation of, uh, I think, what Power Wolf is all about. I mean, it's still like a typical Power Wolf album in a way, but it is like um, we have explored a lot of like new ground, new elements. It's uh, more dense and more detailed than ever in the past. Okay, and uh, this was the longest gap you actually had between albums. Uh, was this intentional or how did it happen? Yeah, we've been super lazy, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say that was a, yeah, it was a decision we made after the Blessed and Processed album because we wanted to play more live shows, more touring and everything like that. And we had a, we had a release between the Metal Mess Live DVD. So that gave us more time to have more more influences and something like that. And moreover, it is important that Faub is on stage and we have to enlarge uh, our territories and to play other countries. So, yeah. But I think in the end it was it was good for the songwriting process to have a little bit more time than the typical two years releasing with them. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that you can hear that on the Sacrament of Sin. And uh, how was the making of this album, uh, writing and recording-wise? Well, writing-wise it was, uh, I would say, one of the most exciting songwriting sessions we ever had. Uh, I already mentioned that we had a, a little... Uh, wider approach on uh, the idea of the songs and uh, also on the elements we used. Like like I said, we explored some new ground, we used uh, way more and more detailed orchestrations than we ever did. And um, as well, uh, we have for the first time in our career changed the producer, uh, which was pretty exciting for us. Like, I mean, we did six albums with Frederick Nordstrom and uh, we did this because, I mean, it just fitted and we've been super happy with what he did. But lately felt like for us it was too much of a routine to, you know, work with the same team over and over again. Like uh, you knew each other pretty well. So you didn't ask any questions anymore. It was like, all right, that is the guitar sound. That is how the organ is supposed to sound. And uh, it was super exciting to, you know, just start with a blank page again like uh, with a new producer, with Jens Bokren. Uh, we didn't know each other, so we started, you know, discussing every little prick in our sound. And it was very good, because that felt a bit like a reinvention process. And in this process, there was much more space to, you know, fit some new elements in between what was already there. So, uh, yeah, I would say we have managed to, you know, enlarge our territory sound-wise. Okay, and uh, what were the main inspirations for you guys for this album? Well, that's a tough question. I have to think about that. Um, I would say there is no direct inspiration in means of I could tell you that uh, there was a movie or there was an album or anything that inspired us. I would rather say that after seven albums in almost the same uh, lineup, we just had one lineup change in 15 years of existence, we are inspiring each other in a way, like Falk with his way he plays the organ, like when I write a melody line, I know or I have in my head how Attila will sound. And all of that is like, I think the most inspiring thing. And uh, then there was another inspiring thing which wasn't planned to be like that. Um, for our previous album, Plastin Possessed, we did a bonus album where we covered uh, 10 of our favorite heavy metal songs. And those had a range that was pretty large, like uh, from uh, Gary Moore to Aim in the Mouth. And uh, doing this project, we had a lot of fun. And we realized that all of these very different songs 
in the end uh, sounded like Power Wolf indeed when we brought in our typical ingredients like Attila's way of singing, like the organ, like our way of how to play the guitar. And we took that inspiration over to the songwriting session, like, all right, we can in fact go for a song that is maybe based on piano, like where the wild wolves have gone, and can't make it sound like Power Wolf. Okay, and uh, the first single, uh, Demons Are a Girl's Best Friend, is coming out soon. Uh, what kind of song is in question? Well, I would say it's uh, in a way an untypical Power Wolf song. I mean, it's like uh, rather a song that has a, a rock vibe, a stadium rock vibe. It's, a, it's got a very good sing-along and it's a, well, I dare say it's a, it's a more lightweight number. It's not that much of, uh, you know, heavy and... Uh, but massive, but, but but a lot of organ parts in there. Oh, I would say with, the I would say <laughs> that the true. song with the most organ parts <laughs> in it, and probably it's a little bit back to the roots thing because, uh, yeah, it, it's a little, little bit in the sense of Kiss of the Cobra King, the song we did. But yeah, it has its catchy melody, and we really could imagine when we wrote this song to perform it on stage, and that was from the beginning a clear vision of it. So we decided to use this song and. I'm super happy in one week. Yeah. And uh, may I add something? Sorry? May I add something? You didn't want to hand over the <laughs> microphone. So I, uh, I, I think uh, for me personally, it's exciting to have chosen a rather untypical song for the first single. I mean, uh, we could have taken more obvious songs like the opening song, Fire and Forgive, which is a super typical Power Wolf song in a way, but uh, Demons Are a Girl's Best Friend is uh, like a bit out of. Uh, what the expectation probably will be and uh, for me it's pretty exciting to you know release the first single being a rather untypical one let's see what happens okay uh, did I hear date in there next week <laughs> no, just, just no we had it on Facebook <laughs> yeah we, we just released revealed today that the video yeah. will be released next? on May 25th yeah. yeah that's it that's it just read it now and didn't know that. Uh, so there's also this uh, short teaser video on Facebook. So is there going to be a music video for this song too? For the Demon song? Or Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's this, what's going to be released next That's week. That's what I mean. Uh, yeah, next week we will show yeah, the video for it. Of course, it's not a release date for like the single as a physical uh, release. It's the release date for the video, so to say, as the yeah, preview to the album. Exactly. Okay, and what kind of video are we talking about? Well, a little bit untypical. I don't want to reveal too much because um, what I can say, it's not a typical band performing video. And yeah, it should be a secret until next week, I would say. And after the album's release, you are heading to uh, Wolfsnachte tour in October. So uh, what are your expectations for the new tour? Well, it's uh, first of all, of course, we were going to play a lot of summer festival this year and we were presenting the new album and then songs of the new album on the festivals, for example, um, at the Masters of Rock headlining show again in Czech Republic and we're going to head, uh, headline the show at the Rock Arts Festival. Yeah, and after that, we, you're, uh, we will go on tour on the Wolf's Nest tour. That is always a special thing for us because it's our own headlining tour after releasing an album and what you can expect and what we can expect is that we want to deliver the sacrament of sin atmosphere completely in, the, in our show and I would say they are the biggest stage setups we ever had so far. And of course with the, with the artwork you can see here it will be transformed on stage and we want to take the audience to a journey to the metal mess and yeah. You should hurry up. The pre-sales are very, very good. Some clubs are already nearby sold out, so it will be great, I think. Okay, and uh, how long and wide tour are we talking about? Uh, the information I found that uh, there's uh, still only uh, European dates till mid-November, but uh, so how long far, is yeah. so far, <laughs> as as we said that already for the blessed of uh, and processed tour, we will enlarge the tour. We will do more live activities and. Uh, yeah, we want to, to show everybody 
uh, the segment of Sin album, of course. And that means for us there will be a lot of true activities uh, over the next two or three years. Uh, but the main focus now is on Europe, the main focus now is on the festivals, and after that we will see what's coming up next. But I'm quite sure that there will be a lot of touring of Power Wolf. And you said that you are already eager to get on stage with the new material, so how important are live performances for you? You? I? You? Well, okay. It's like the air we breathe. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, I think ever since we founded the band, we considered ourselves a live band, a band that's meant to stand on stage and have a good time together with the audience. It's like we love to, you know, perform the heavy metal mass. And uh, well, it's always like when we have a break for a studio production, uh, we feel like we really, you know, <laughs> can't wait to, to finally get back on stage. It's really like that addiction to perform on stage. You, you can also say possession for it because um, what we are doing here is it's everything's of course important, of course, but uh, we have good new songs and so on. But I really count the days until the mid of June, the first show for, for Paul Wolf this year in Paris with Ozzy Osbourne, and which it, it will be a good starting point. Yeah. Okay, and uh, people, of course, always have a good time on your in your gigs. I hope but, so. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but uh, what makes a good gig for you? Well, I, I have one sentence I really like to say. It's always the thing that we, we said, say that uh, we want to entertain the audience, of course. But if also the audience entertains the band, then you have the perfect combination of both. And that means a perfect evening for everybody. And yeah, that's what it is in the end. Uh, and that everybody can have a good time and um, can forget his sorrows and everything like that. So that's our, our credo. And if it happens like that, it is, yeah, then it's, then it's good for us. Okay, thank you so much and all the best for the rest of the year. All right. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.